goes. You can't really predict summer rain anymore. So what's the snow like? I haven't been... him later so I thought you could all appreciate him now and uh, uh, it's just a privilege to be here this morning and uh, dedicating a marker for an event that happened 236 years ago a special thank you to D DAR member Eileen Patch whose perseverance made this dedication possible Eileen couldn't make it today because she's had hip surgery, but she really has worked hard to get this event going. Interest in history is growing. There's Ancestry.com, all kinds of information on the World Wide Web, and it's important to leave indicators marking significant historic events for future generations so that they can become curious and learn about the history that happened right here in this region. Our local history is a gift and needs to be kept alive. The Sullivan-Clinton campaign was George Washington's biggest and most successful campaign in the region from Quebec through New York and Pennsylvania. For in this territory resided the Iroquois Indian Nation. The Iroquois tribe that lived in our local region was the Tuscarora tribe. Most of the Iroquois tribes sided with the colonists fighting for the British. The exceptions were Tuscarora and on Oneida. Major General John Sullivan and Brigadier General James Clinton's military units systematically destroyed the homes, livestock, food stores, and crops of those Iroquois siding with the loyal, Loyalists. They crippled the British Loyalist effort and bolstered the cause of the colonists fighting for this country's independence. The homeless, sick, and starving Iroquois became a huge burden for the British Loyalists. England was unwilling to provide any support for the Iroquois Indians. The Loyalist cause was lost in this large region. Our way of life here in our community and in this country was shaped in many definitive ways because of the Sullivan-Clinton campaign. We're gonna start this dedication this morning with an invocation by our DA, our chaplain, Mary Yorton. Good morning. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we dedicate this marker, let us remember the sacrifices our country's founders made to gain and preserve our independence. Help us to endeavor to promote our American ideals of freedom and equality, and to remember the guiding principle of the daughters of the American Revolution to honor God, home, and country. In your name we pray. Amen. Sabbath services on the 8th. The order was read stating, Be ready to depart on the morrow. The army would move at sunrise the next day. A final diary notation made on August 8th states, All the boats are ready to proceed down the river tomorrow. This evening at 6 o'clock, 
the sluice way was broke up and the water filled the river immediately where a boat could pass. And on the date of August 18, 1779, General Clinton's expedition arrived at what is now Confluence Park in Broome County, Binghamton, New York. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, we're going to have a little bit more history, because we love it. <laughs> I asked uh, Arlene Niemeyer to come forward. On this day, 236 years ago, Clinton's troops reached the confluence of the Susquehanna and Shenango Rivers where they received a messenger from Gen General Sullivan's forces. The next day, the two units came to together at a place later called Union. At the dedication of the original marker in 1929, Frank, L Frank J. Conklin of the State Historical Society stated, we are all proud to stand by our flag in commemoration of the 1,000 officers and men who, led by General James Clinton, forded the river at this point as they went to join General Sullivan. Some of them camped on what became the Eldridge Place, uh, just across from the po this point we call Confluence Park. Uh, tradition tells us that the box that holds our chapter gavel, and there it is, was made from a piece of elm tree under which the tent of General Clinton's officers stood during the encampment there in 1799. The box was first used in 1907. Thank you. This is Arlene Niemeyer showing us the gavel box. Good morning, everyone, and hello. It's very nice to see so many people uh, show up this morning for uh, very significant events in our community. One of the things that uh, makes Binghamton so unique and that we are so fortunate to have is a long and rich history in our community. Here we are at the confluence of the Shenango and Susquehanna Rivers. And I can tell you that all throughout downtown Binghamton and across our city, there are many significant historic points. Whether it's the Underground Railroad that uh, uh, has lineage to Binghamton City Hall, whether it's uh, different Native American tribes that uh, set up camp in different areas of the city, or whether it's the history that we're talking about here today, there are decades and generations of stories that all have one thing in common, the city of Binghamton. And what that means is that for generations, there were multiple things about our community that made it attractive to a variety of different groups of people. And I can tell you, as mayor, that when we do different types of infrastructure projects, whether it's building a building downtown, constructing a park like this one, or doing street reconstruction, one of the things that the city needs to do is to uh, conduct historical digs to make sure that we're not disturbing any sort of artifacts or uh, identify areas that may have historical significance. And the building right across the street from us, a student housing complex right there, there was extensive work that was done by a group from Binghamton University and we often find time uh, oftentimes find a variety of different artifacts whether it's uh, bones uh, tools pottery arrowheads and other sorts of, uh, of items and I think that uh, it just goes to show that uh, for a long period of time especially along our riverbanks this was a significant location in the city of Binghamton. And that's why uh, I'm so honored uh, to be here today to 
uh, with all of you to not only talk about the history of this particular location, but to also accept the designation and the marker. It's something that I'm, uh, I'm very excited about. And the fact that we have so many uh, individuals uh, from our community, from outside our community, uh, history enthusiasts as well, shows uh, just how significant this really is. And a lot of times when we, when we talk about history, we talk about the importance of making sure that uh, it's passed down from generation to generation uh, for residents and visitors to be able to uh, enjoy, to learn about. And I can't think of any better location in our city than, than beautiful Confluence Park, where our two rivers converge, uh, the scene of many uh, historical events, to, uh, to showcase and display this piece of history. So I, for one, am uh, very looking forward to it. And uh, I thank you for the opportunity to, uh, to address you here as part of this event. Thank you very much. more fight and drum music. to ask one of the city officials to uh, unveil, or as Eileen said, untarp the uh, <laughs> historic marker. And I will be reading what it says on the marker. August 9, 1779, camped the army of General James Clinton en route to join the forces of General John Sullivan in the expedition against the Iroquois Indians and their British allies in the War of the American Revolution. Originally erected by the Tuscarora Chapter NSDAR in the state of New York on October 12, 1929 rededicated by the Tuscarora Chapter, NSDAR, and the City of Binghamton Parks Department on the 18th of August, 2015. All who pause in this place, may this marker make effective the voice of the memorial. May it remind them of the nobility of life, well lived, and quicken their acknowledgement of the continuing call to unselfish service. And the inheritance which you will hold in the land that the Lord your God gives you to possess, you shall not remove your neighbor's landmark, which the men of old have set. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, for records of the past, 
which give inspiration and courage to our generation. We thank you for the lessons silently taught by memorials to events of distant years and to deeds of long ago. May we add our assurances to these, increasing their strength for generations yet to be. Amen. Nothing is really ended until it is forgotten. Whatever is kept in memory still endures. Therefore, we the members of the Tuscarora chapter, National Society, Daughters of the American Revolution, dedicate this marker in grateful recognition of the significance of this site. May it help to keep alive an appreciative appreciation of our heritage. Let us pray. May the blessing of God rest upon and abide here forever. Amen. In the name of Tuscarora Chapter, I present this marker. <laughs> On, oh. <laughs> That's a beauty. That's <laughs> On behalf of the City of Binghamton Parks and Recreation Department, I accept this marker. <laughs> Let us pray. We give thanks, gracious Lord, for the many blessings granted us by your grace. May we continue to find inspiration and hope in the deeds and actions of our forefathers, whose trust in you fortified their determination to secure our nation. We mark this historic site to preserve a part of our national heritage so that future generations can appreciate what has brought us to this day. May we go forth with praise for our great heritage and ask God's blessing now and evermore. Amen. We're finished. Thank you so much for coming. It was a privilege to be able to do this. Wonderful. Okay. Okay. You had no idea what I mean. All right. Can I you? Uh, I already told Dave that this is wrong. Okay. <laughs>